Hello guys! This is Tetiworks and in today's tutorial I will show you how to create a beautiful low poly design in Procreate step by step. You can download the color palette you will use, reference photo and PNG overlay image in the video description. If you like my YouTube tutorials, you can find more in-depth tutorials and exclusive brush sets on my Patreon page. It's also linked in the description below. Without further ado, let's grab our pencils and get started. I've created a canvas with the dimensions of 2000 by 2500 pixels, 300 dpi. If you'd like to keep same brush settings as mine, I would recommend you to work on the canvas with the same parameters. If you ever saw cool abstract designs having a bunch of triangles of different colors, you should know that this type of art is called low poly. There are many different ways to create them using various drawing apps. And now I will show you an easy and fun technique that can be used to make a low poly design on Procreate. First of all, we'll need a photo to work with, or it can be a drawing too. Let me import this beautiful image of a deer that I found on Unsplash.com. One of the reasons why I picked this particular image is that it has a combination of light and dark shades, and also there is a way to paint only one side and use symmetry. But if you are using your own image, it actually doesn't have to be symmetrical, it will just make the process twice faster. Let me now go ahead and create a new layer, right above the image. And I picked white color, that I'm going to use for the outlines. In the brushes, I will go to Ink Inset and select Fine Tip Brush. It has a very soft shape, that will help us later. The brush size can be set to 40% and we can start to outline the deer actually on the left side of it. So I will first draw a vertical line to divide the D into two parts. I will tap on the canvas to make it go strictly vertical. And you can move it if needed. I will be orienting on the nose. Alright. Now let's work on this side. We need to create outlines using only straight lines. I will start from here. And if we will be waiting a few seconds, the quick shape tool will be activated. So the lines will be completely straight. We can divide this big triangle into a few parts right away. I will keep them big enough, but actually the more tiny triangles you create, the better your work will look in the end. Right now I'd like to show you only the technique. So let's now go up on the horn and outline it with the straight lines. We can match the tips using edit tool. I will draw four lines here, until this point. Now we can draw a triangle to this side. Then I will also connect them here and go up. Here I will draw three more lines. One, two, and three. I think this is a very fun process. We can make this line go to this side, then I will connect these two corners, draw another line, and create a triangle. Inside this small one we can also draw a few more. Now let's outline it on the right side, also using only straight lines. Maybe we can make it bigger. Now 
finally connecting them. And now we can also create triangles. Here I will draw two of them. This way. We also need to consider dark and light areas. So later we can place colors. This way the object will get volume. And look shaded. Here I will draw in the opposite direction. And here comes the last one. The horn is ready. Let's continue working on the head. Let me go to the right side. Actually, for your convenience, I included the files with the outlines in the tutorial bundle. But I would highly recommend you to do it with me, so you can practice and later apply same techniques on your own image. Now let's divide the ear into a few parts as well. We can see a clear triangle here. Then I will draw two more lines. And I will separate the ear from the horn. Just make a line a little lower. Let's now connect it here. And then on the other side. Here I will make two lines. We can already connect these corners. Also draw another triangle. Then this one. And before we connect the triangles with the rest of the head, I will start from the eye. So here we can divide it into two triangles as well. I will draw this one. And then one more. This way it is repeating the eye shape. And now we can continue working on this side. So actually I will connect this corner with this one. We can also divide this part like this. I'm also paying attention to light and dark areas, as I already said. It will help with shading. But actually there are no very strict rules. You can place triangles however you want. Just make sure it looks nice. We can now connect these lines. Then I will draw a few more lines going to the eye. And we can make some shapes here. I will draw a triangle. And then start connecting it with other corners. As you can see, they are very big. But as I said, you can make them very small. To make the design more detailed. Here I will draw a small triangle. Then connect it. And go to the nose. I 
I'm just connecting all the corners I see. Let's now work on the nose a little. I will draw a straight line from here. Then another one go into the mouth. And divide it into two parts. Let's continue connecting the lines. And go down. I will draw a smaller triangle here in the lower part of the snout. Let me make a straight line here. Then I will make another triangle. Connect it here. And I think two more triangles will be enough. We can totally draw a line here. And make sure you don't have any gaps between the lines. Otherwise, we will have problems when filling. Here I will draw a big line. That will go down. Then also connect it. And I think now I will go inside. So we could finish the neck. I will draw a bigger line. And then like this. Let me draw a line from this part now. And then I will connect it. You can actually make a point here. And from there draw a few lines. Go into different corners. Let me draw one going here. Then I will add one more triangle that will be smaller. And then two more lines. Let's check it out once again. I think I will just draw two more triangles inside the ear. And that's it. Let's now remove the background and also the photo to see what we got. In the next part of the video we will start applying the colors. Now we can actually bring back the background and invert the outlines to make them black. So they are seen on the canvas. Also to be able to use the reference photo to see the location of dark and light areas, we can just move it all around the canvas. I'd like to start with the horns, so I will put it here. Somewhere on the side. To keep the outlines on a separate layer and still be able to fill the colors in the triangles, let's do this. Create a new layer above the outlines. Then go back to the layer with the outlines and in the layers menu select reference. Now whatever we do on a new layer, it will refer to the layer with the outlines, so it will help us. To make the process easier and more convenient, I will go to the color palette and just drag it on the canvas, like this. After that I will switch to palettes. Let me also say a couple of words about the colors. Here are 10 colors for the horns and 2 more colors for the rest of the deer. It will be more than enough even if you have a greater number of smaller triangles. When creating a color palette for your low poly design, it's important to keep colors in balance. 
I mean there should be light colors, mid-tones and dark shades for the contrast and depth. And as you see each row is in one color range. Of course you can make the drawing very colorful and use all spectrum of colors. It might be just more difficult to place them correctly regarding shadows and highlights. So it's better to start with a low range. Now I will be just looking at the reference and dragging the color into triangles. This area is light, so let me start with the first color. And I will also adjust the color draw threshold. I will make sure it covers the outlines, but not going outside. Let's continue and go down. I will make this triangle dark for the contrast. And now work on this part. Let's also make it lighter. And then dark. This way it will get volume. Let's continue going to the right side. And we can see that this area is light. So let's start to highlight it gradually. Let me make this one light and the other one even lighter. Here at the bottom I will apply darker colors. Let's also make this one darker. And this part will be the darkest. On the tip I will make it light. Now the horn is ready. We can continue working on the head. We can also move the color palette however we want. So I will place it somewhere here. And start working on the ear. Let me make this tip orange. Then I will go darker. Here at the lower side I will apply the darkest color. Then fill the other triangle. And in the center I will make it light. We can also add some yellow color. And this triangle will be also dark. We can actually now fill the eye. So I will make this triangle very dark and the one on the side a little lighter. Now we can lighten the area around the eye. This will be orange. Then I will make it darker and light on the side. Let's continue adding orange shades. Also yellow. Here I will make it very light, according to the reference. And then go darker for this area. When filling the triangles make sure that the colors are not touching. I mean the same colors, otherwise it will look like a rhombus or rectangle. And we don't want that. Let me select this color. Then I will select 8 color again. Let's add some more orange. And go darker. I think it is fine. Let's now darken this part. And make it very dark in the middle. I think I will add more yellow than this color and darken it in the center again. You can totally go with your own combination. 
there are no strict rules. I will make this part lighter and work on the nose. I will make it very dark in the center and slightly lighter on the side. Let's now fill this part and continue on the bigger triangles. I will make it dark on the side, then add orange On the snout I will darken this area close to the light part to separate it from the neck. Alright, this part will be lighter and this one as well. Here I will make it different. And then orange. I think we can already see the head, so we only need to finish the neck. Let's make it very dark, as it is on the reference. So I'm filling this triangle, and then the one on the side. We have only a few bigger triangles left. So let's finish them quickly. Let's make this one orange, then I will add third color, let me fill this one, and here comes the last one. We can now remove the color palette from the canvas, simply by closing it. I will also delete the reference photo and the outlines to check what we got. If you have any tiny gaps that appeared while filling, you can simply remove them using your pen. Also we can go to adjustments and apply Gaussian blur just at 1% to make the lines smooth. Now if you look from distance, it will look perfect. We only need to duplicate the layer Flip one of them horizontal and drag it to the opposite side. Let's match it manually and make sure there is no gap. Before merging the layers, I will create a layer above this one and clip it. I just want to make it darker, this way introducing more colors. So let me grab black color from the color disk, go to selection, I will pick rectangle and create a rectangle that will cover the right half of the head. Let's click color fill. Now I will go to the layer and change its blending mode. You can play around with different colors but I will set it to soft light, also lower the opacity to make it slightly lighter, I think around 85% or maybe 80, it's up to you. After that we can merge all three layers and start working on the background. I will first create a new layer under the drawing, let me pick a color from this ear some dark shade and draw a rectangle in this quarter of the canvas. Now we can pick some orange and draw another rectangle on the right quarter. We can also pick this color To draw another rectangle, maybe I will make it slightly lower. Just make sure they're intersecting. And for the last one, I also want to select dark, for example from this part of the horn. We can just fill it. 
Now let's go to Adjustments and apply Gaussian Blur on it. Just make sure all the colors are blended. So this number needs to be high. I think around 70% is enough. Now let me go to Actions and insert another file with triangular abstract background. I will rotate it, then also flip it vertical and click fit to canvas. We can actually stretch it, so it covers the entire canvas. Let me just move it like this. Now I will go to the layer, change its blending mode first, I will select soft light and set the opacity to 35%, so it will be glowing. In the end, to separate the deer from the background, I will add a shadow. So let me just duplicate the drawing. I will go to this one. And to make it pure black, I will be using Hue Saturation Brightness option from Adjustments. I will just set brightness to none. Now let's go back to Adjustments and apply Motion Blur. I will slide diagonally to around 45%. Now we can move it. I will match it here with the tips. And after this last step, our low poly deer design is complete. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. For more tutorials and brush sets, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.